I'm diving right now. We need to find out if this is her. Volunteer divers discover the remains of an Orlando mom who has been missing for over a decade, her family tells us. The new piece of information that helped them crack the case. And three people were sent to the hospital after a shooting on New Year's Eve. Now, investigators need your help finding the people responsible. Plus, a man caught on camera trying to kidnap a four-year-old child at a Florida Walmart. How he was eventually stopped. Local. Live. Late-breaking. WESH 2 News starts now. After vanishing 12 years ago, the remains of a missing Orlando mother were finally found this weekend, according to her family. A volunteer dive team found Sandra Lemire's minivan in a retention pond off of I-4 and the 417 near Disney around World Drive. West News Marley Martinez tells us how they say they finally cracked this case. FHP is now investigating this crash. She tells us that they are waiting on the medical examiner's office to identify the remains. We've also checked in with Orlando police who say this is an active investigation and they'll share more information once they have it. The man shot by Marion County deputies has now died. This all started with an hours long standoff Sunday afternoon. Deputies say they were called to a home on Southwest 19th Avenue Road after reports of a man firing shots both inside and outside of his home. That man has now been identified as 41-year-old Stephen Clark Jr. Crisis negotiators tried to talk him into a peaceful surrender, but were told that when he pulled his gun on deputies, they shot back. We do know that he was taken to the hospital where he later died. A New Year's Eve shooting in Titusville ends with three people wounded and all of them in the hospital. Investigators are still looking for those behind the shooting. Our Brevard Bureau Chief Scott Heidler has been talking with police and reports the shooting brought out of the crowd. Well, let's talk about your forecast now because it's been a cool weekend. A lot of people were telling me last night yeah. it was downright cold celebrating New Year's. I mean, the last couple of nights were the coldest we had seen yet this season, right? Temperatures tonight are going to be cool, not quite as cold, but jackets still will be needed, Stu. Uh, for us Central Floridians, we're just not used to this stuff. Look at how beautiful it is, though. There's Daytona Beach, our tower cam network, showing just a few clouds over top. Uh, we've been watching people walking the beach. It's been lovely. But remember, this morning, with all of that smoke, kind of getting trapped here at the surface. We had all kinds of air quality issues. Look outside now. We're back to business as usual. Good air quality around all of Central Florida. And a cold front is moving our direction. This cold front will help to keep things status quo, keep things feeling like a nice, chilly January setup. 69 now in the city. We're in the upper 60s here across the villages. Mid 60s for Palm Coast and Ocala. And notice even down into the tourist district. Kissimmee, St. Cloud, reading about 68. So overnight tonight, with a mix of clouds and stars, those temperatures will drop off nicely. 52, 3 a.m. We'll be sleeping 50 degrees by 5 a.m. And by the time we wake up, 7, 8 o'clock or so, temperatures hanging out in the 30s, 40s, and 50s. But what about in your neighborhood? Let's go county by county. Plus, take a look at a couple of storm systems moving our way. See you in just a couple minutes. New at 5, a Rivard County man is in jail after he was arrested for his 7th DUI. Deputies pulled Douglas Moore over Friday for an improper registration. The sheriff's office says deputies could smell alcohol and asked him to do a field sobriety test, but he refused and was later arrested. Deputy Moore was required to have an interlock device on his car, but did not, and was driving an unregistered car with improper tags. In Polk County, a driver died after she crossed over a median and crashed into a ditch. Deputies responded to a call about a crash just before 10 o'clock on US 27 near Peace Creek Park Road. They say 22-year-old Serena Bells of Winter Haven was in the driver's seat. The sheriff's office says there was no evidence of steering or braking. The cause of the crash remains under investigation. It's a new year, which means several new laws are now in effect in Florida. Yeah, first, the state law requiring drivers to move over a lane for first responders and other emergency cars is now expanding. Drivers will have to move over one lane or slow down for any cars that are on the side of the road with their hazard lights on. Another law implements a uniform bond schedule for the whole state. This tightens up pre-trial release options for certain felony offenders depending on their criminal history. The Protect Our Loved Ones Act now allows law enforcement to maintain a database called the Persons with Disabilities Registry. It includes individuals who have a developmental, psychological, or other disability or condition that might be relevant to their interactions with law enforcement officers. You will now be able to make a reservation for cabins, campsites, and RV spots at state parks one month before reservations open for non-residents. For us Floridians, though, that means you can book your spot 
11 months out. You can read more about all of these new laws on our website at WESH.com. If you need to stock up on school supplies for the new semester, you are in luck. Florida has another back to school sales tax holiday. It began today and runs for the next two weeks through the 14th. Items exempt from sales tax include learning aids and puzzles selling for $30 or less. Most school supplies for $50 or less. Some's clothing, shoes, and accessories for $100 or less. And laptops and computer accessories for $1,500 or less. All right, success. Today, the Precision Horse Performance Team from the Silver Spurs Riding Club in Osceola County participate in the Rose Parade in Pasadena. We first told you about the effort to perform in the parade last week. West News Dave McDaniel just spoke with two of the excited participants. Osceola County Experience, Kissimmee, and other sponsors made the trip possible to showcase our local area. The Rose Parade means the Rose Bowl and the start of the college football playoffs today. The first semifinal between top-ranked Michigan Wolverines and Alabama Crimson Tide getting underway right now. Washington Huskies will take on the Texas Longhorns at the Sugar Bowl with kickoff set for 845. The winners should have to play a good FSU team, but that's another topic for another day. The championship game will be next Monday in Houston. The schedule for the final week of the NFL regular season was released during Sunday Night Football. The Buccaneers, well, they are on the road taking on the Carolina Panthers in the early window at 1 o'clock. The Jaguars are also playing at 1 against the Titans in Tennessee. The Dolphins will end their regular season at home on Sunday Night Football, taking on the Buffalo Bills for the division title. Kickoff is at 8.20 p.m. Snoop Dogg now heading to Paris this summer to join NBC's coverage of the 2024 Olympic Games. He'll provide regular reports for the Olympics primetime show beginning July 26 on NBC. Throughout the game, Snoop will be speaking with host Mike Tirico and provide the large primetime U.S. audience with his unique take on what's happening in Paris. Snoop will also explore iconic landmarks and speak with athletes and their families and friends, among other duties. He actually has experience in this arena. He joined comedian Kevin Hart for Olympics commentary during the 2021 Tokyo Games. And of course, you can catch all the Olympic action right here on West 2 when the Summer Games kick off on July 26th. Oh, it's going to be very entertaining. It's hilarious. <laughs> all right, still to come on West News at 5. A massive great white shark spotted off of Florida's east coast. Where the shark was and why there is no need to worry. Plus, it's a long lasting impact. Oh, no. A Central Florida community trying to heal after shooting at a popular mall. The new approach police are trying that could help us all in the long run. But first, it's a new year, a beautiful day, and hundreds are out on the beach enjoying the day to the fullest. I'm Pamela Combe, and I spoke with some of the people who decided to spend the new year out on the water. Closed captioning brought to you by National Floors Direct. From morning to night, West 2 First Warning Weather is Central Florida's most accurate. Certified by WeatherAid, now for 16 years straight. No matter the forecast, we'll help you plan for today. And to prepare you for tomorrow. From the first warning of severe storms to the perfect time to get outside. We have the most accurate forecast around the clock. That's our commitment to you. Experience, accuracy, trust. West 2 First Warning Weather. Many people who traveled for the holidays are now on their way back home. Take a look here as a live look from our tower cam pointed at Orlando International Airport. Everything looks clear right now. Officials expect more than 168,000 travelers to pass through the airport today alone. The holiday travel period officially runs through this Sunday. A massive 1,400-pound great white shark just pinged off the coast of St. Augustine. Breton, a 13-and-a-half-foot great white, surfaced around 5 this morning. He is the third shark to ping off the coast of Florida in the last two months. A 10-foot, 520-pound shark named Penny pinged near Key Largo on Thursday. In November, a 10-foot, 460-pound great white named Crystal pinged near Daytona Beach. The sharks usually begin migrating south in mid-October. October before primarily settling in the Gulf of Mexico around this time of year. Usually stay about 100 miles offshore. Also, it's pretty cold. We're not getting in. <laughs> Great whites can grow up to about 20 feet long and weigh over 4,400 pounds. Wow. And as the new year begins, many people have resolutions, but a Monday reset at the beach was at the top of many people's list. Hopefully, they're not getting the water uh, out. No. West Street's Pamela Cohn was out in Flagler and Daytona Beach, where hundreds are enjoying the last days of winter break and spending the day out on the water. 
And of course, it was a great day out on the water. Yes. It was a cold day, though, unless you are from um, somewhere north of Florida. Yeah, and Volcano Bay actually closed Tuesday to weather. Well, it so. was the last couple of days. A lot of these yeah. theme parks had to because nobody wants to go in the water. No. no. Even if they're heating it, it's it's nobody wants to get out of the water. You know yeah. what I mean? Right. It's, it's <laughs> yeah, one of those kinds of things. <laughs> um, all right, let's take a look and just kind of get an idea. It is beautiful outside across town. Here's Tavares, our tower cam network there. Mainly clear skies over top of us. A nice light breeze. It's not 42 degrees. It's not at all. I need to go out there with a screwdriver and hit that thermometer. Uh, temperatures, though, around Central Florida are sitting in the 60s. We are dropping little bit by little bit. Still at 70 degrees, New Smyrna Beach. But with a nice light westerly breeze, we're going to be dropping those temperatures little bit by little bit tonight. We've got a cold front that'll be moving on through. And we can see visible satellites showing a few clouds over top. But for tonight, it's a nice evening. 62 degrees, 7 o'clock, 60 by 9 o'clock, and about 57 degrees by 11 o'clock. Nice and quiet out. So quiet that the temperatures are going to be able to drop. 39 degrees, our overnight low temperature in Ocala. 37 tonight in Reddick, about 40 degrees in Lynn. Uh, I think about 42 here in the villages, 44 in Leesburg, 41 degrees in Bushnell. And around Lake County, a little bit milder thanks to those bodies of water. 44 in Leesburg, 45 degrees in Astatoo and 46 degrees here in Groveland and Claremont. Back over to the Space Coast, up 50 to about 52 from the Cape, back over to Cocoa Beach, 48 in Vieira, 49 here in St. Cloud, about 48 degrees in Celebration. And through the Metro, it's 45 Apopka, 47 in Oviedo, and 42 degrees in Palm Coast. For tomorrow, beautiful sunshine, but the cold front that's moving into our area tonight limits the daytime heating. So instead of about 70 like today, we'll be in the 50s and and 60s. That's going to be about it. It's going to be a beautiful day, though. 59 degrees. Our lunchtime temperature tomorrow about 61 uh, by 2 o'clock, 62 degrees. That is going to be about it. Cold front will be south of us. We'll be getting that cool breeze. It's going to feel and look just perfect. Then by Wednesday, our next storm system starts gearing up and approaching us. And as it does so, it'll bring up the temperatures and then eventually bring some scattered showers for Central Florida. Here's 8, 830 on Wednesday evening, mostly cloudy skies. There are the showers moving through nothing too intense, but models are showing just that little pockets of heavier rainfall, particularly overnight, and then clearing out nicely for Thursday morning's races and for perhaps more importantly, Thursday's morning commute. But that's storm system number one, bringing showers and even some gusty breezes. Then then we look out to the Gulf of Mexico, the state of Texas, and our next storm system that's developing that will sweep our direction and arrive by Saturday. This one has a little bit more atmospheric energy. And so because of that, gusty thunderstorms, even the potential for some strong to severe storms. So watching the seven day forecast here, some rain on Thursday, storms on Saturday. We'll have to keep tabs on that. But the other sidebar here is look at those temperatures just all over the place dancing all up and down as we've got this quick weather flow moving on through. So to come, Congress returns from the holiday break with a long list of issues to address. The issue at the top of the list that lawmakers have less than two weeks to resolve. But first. Change is not like a light switch. It is a process. It's that time of year when we all set out to improve our lives, but many have trouble keeping their New Year's resolutions. The best ways to ensure you stick to yours this year. Custom weather alerts on the West 2 app. Download it today. We're still more than 17 hours into the new year, and already there are people who broke their resolutions. Yeah, I can't believe it, but Statistica.com surveyed more than 400 adults in the U.S. in October, asking them about their goals for 2024. Well, here are the most common resolutions. Nearly 60% of respondents said they'd like to save more money. That's a good one. 50% say their goal is to exercise more. And not far behind that, at 47% people said they want to eat healthier. Well, 40% say they want to spend more time with family and friends. So how are you already not, you know, like, that's... Listen, if some people said they weren't going to eat sweets and there's a piece of cake next to them, maybe they had a piece of cake at lunch. Well, you got to get rid of everything. Day one is a scratch day. <laughs> Mulligan. <laughs> Believe it. All right, so your resolutions are still intact, though. Congratulations to you. You're already doing... Better than some. How do you make sure that your resolutions continue to stick? A clinical psychologist mm -hmm. with the Cleveland Clinic <laughs> says the first way is to I be specific know. about your goals. Also, be realistic. Okay. Setting goals that are not sustainable can make resolutions fall flat. This is because we tend to set 
behaviors that are too different from where we are at at this very moment. Anticipating obstacles. This is a helpful strategy for continuing resolutions. Stopping a behavior is harder than starting one. So instead of trying not to eat any more junk food, try setting up a goal to eat more fruits and veggies. That's smart. Yeah. Setting Take resolutions with others also helps. Creating a goal list with your family can help keep everyone accountable and engaged and help everyone stay on the same page throughout the year. Coming up, new rules for students applying for financial aid and those who are paying back those student loans. Yeah, how the government is now simplifying the FAFSA application process and how borrowers could get a retirement boost while paying back loans. But first... It's very scary because I come here all the time with my daughter. I am kind of shocked at what happened here. A man caught on camera trying to snatch a child in the middle of a busy Walmart. The concerns from parents tonight. continues. After each tragic shooting a community suffers, there are vigils to remember the victims and calls for f tighter gun laws. But this week, Ocala police are trying something different. As West Shoes Michelle Meredith explains, police are turning to therapy to help heal the community and after last month's shooting at a packed shopping mall. The community support meeting will be Thursday at 530 at the Ocala Police Department. We have posted that information on our website, WESH.com. And Ocala Police are still looking for the man they say is responsible for the shooting. The department is currently offering a $15,000 reward for information leading to the arrest of Albert Shell Jr. A man facing charges after surveillance video showed him trying to kidnap a child at a Walmart in Lee County. As Samantha Romero from our sister station reports, it has some parents worried for their children's safety. Hernandez is charged with false imprisonment of a child. More than $44,000 worth of Legos were stolen from a Jacksonville area charity. V Pizza stored the brick toys in a warehouse. Those toys are for its foundation called V for Victory. The charity donates Lego sets to children battling cancer. The owner says he actually started the organization after his own son was diagnosed with cancer. Because we as a family had the, the means that every time you know, he had some sort of surgery or something like that, that we would go to Target afterwards and buy him a Lego set. You know, it really changed the mindset of a lot of children and helped families because something that was so negative, you know, we were able to slightly turn it into a positive. With Lego sets costing about $100 per set, this means 440 children will now miss out on toys. No arrests have been made yet. It happened again. Another child traveling alone was accidentally flown to the wrong destination during this chaotic holiday travel season. This time it's Frontier Airlines, but it wasn't one of their agents that made a mistake. They say a 16-year-old boy was supposed to hop on a flight from Tampa to Cleveland, Ohio last week. He mistakenly boarded a flight to San Juan, Puerto Rico. Oh, Both goodness. flights were departing from the same gate, and the flight to Puerto Rico was first. Frontier says the team was flown back to Tampa and put on another flight to Cleveland the next day. The airline has apologized to the family for what happened. Frontier allows children 15 and older to fly alone. It does not have an escort program for minors. You may remember in a separate incident, Spirit Airlines fired a gated agent who escorted a six-year-old onto the wrong flight in Philadelphia. That child was supposed to fly to Fort Myers but ended up in Orlando. I don't understand how this happens, though, because don't you still have to swipe your ticket to get on the flight? You would think this would not happen, but uh, apparently it did twice. Yeah. All right. Congress is starting the new year with the same set of issues that they left unfinished in 2023. When members returned, the House has fewer than two weeks to avoid a partial government shutdown. The Senate still has to iron out an agreement on how to deal with the U.S.-Mexico border. White House correspondent Kayla Norwood is in Washington. What we can expect. Some powdered baby formulas are being pulled from shelves right now for potential contamination issues. The FDA says Reckitt Mead, Johnson's Nutrim, or excuse me, Nutramagen Hypoaller, my goodness, Nutramagen Hypoallergenic Powdered Infant Formula products could be contaminated with bacteria. I should know, I use this for years. So far, no illnesses have been reported. We have posted more information about the recall on our website, wesh.com. A big loss for NASCAR fans. Three-time cup champion Cale Yarborough has died at the age of 84. He is considered one of the greatest NASCAR drivers of all time. He rose to fame in the 70s, won the Daytona 500 four times, and holds 83 Cup Series victories. 
New details about the proposed merger between the PGA Tour and Live Golf. The two leagues are working to extend their merger deadline. The deadline was initially set for yesterday, but in a memo sent to players, the PGA Tour commissioner says negotiations would extend into the new year based on the current progress. The U.S. Federal Trade Commission and the Justice Department would likely look into any deal for antitrust scrutiny. So to come on Western News at 5, a new incarnation of America's Got Talent premieres tonight. This is more fun than I've ever had in anything that I've done with AGT. The tweaks you can expect to the classic competition when America's Got Talent Fantasy League makes its debut. Plus a massive earthquake sending tsunami alerts from Japan to Russia. The concerns that remain tonight as rescue efforts are underway. Closed captioning is sponsored by attorney Dan Newlin. Fireworks may have been the cause of a large apartment fire in Brooklyn last night. That fire just started in the courtyard before then spreading to the building, damaging at least a dozen apartments. Seven people, including two children and two firefighters, suffered smoke inhalation. Eighty people have now been displaced and are staying in a temporary shelter because of it. A reminder here in Florida, if you still have some leftover fireworks from last night, after today, it is illegal to set them off. Florida law says you can only pop them on the 4th of July, New Year's Eve, and New Year's Day. But keep in mind, some city ordinances like Palm Coast and Flagler Beach ban fireworks at all times. The ball drop in New York City is one of the most iconic New Year's Eve celebrations, but some cities across the U.S. have their own unique ways of bringing in the new year. Boise, Idaho rang in 2024 with a spud-tacular celebration at their state capitol. Thousands turned out for the 11th annual potato drop and fireworks. In New Orleans, people gathered in the French Quarter to watch the Fleur de Liz drop at the clock hit midnight. I'm sure I'm going to get some emails from our New Orleans Cajun folks. All right, in the Florida Keys, the island of Key West held its annual red shoe drop at midnight. They did. Thousands gathered to witness this tradition every year. This year, a new impersonator took the seat in the shoe. That is Christopher Peterson riding in the heel. It's a big shoe to fill, so to speak because it was left by drag queen Sushi, who held the role for the past 25 years. Tsunami alerts are in place from Japan to Russia after a 7.5 magnitude earthquake struck the western portion of Japan today. Mike Valerio shows us the moment the quake hit and where rescue efforts stand. All right, it was pretty chilly last night, and I know we're going to be kind of all over the place. Yeah. Over the next we week. need the sunshine to help us. I know. Because if you're in the shade, it. you feel it. Oh, man, I am, I'm, I'm running out of long-sleeve, non-work clothing, yeah. right? I'm going to have to start Good wearing a suit while refereeing my children. Do it. It'll, you'll stand out. <laughs> Until the kids pull on. Anyway, uh, it's a pretty nice night for us. The sun is coming on down. There's the Kennedy Space Center. Don't have any launches set for now. But, man, it was a busy 2023. Can't wait to see what 2024 looks like out there. 67 degrees and the sun has officially set a nice light breeze out of the west southwest at five. So temperatures are cooling. It's going to be a nice one where it's 69 on Merritt Island, 66 Port St. John, 64 in Mims. Temperatures are definitely going to accelerate their descent these next few moments time. 64 in Leesburg, 64 degrees here in Ocala and a clean sweep on our first warning live Doppler radar. For now, watching some clouds streaming through, but there's a cold front and that front is going to push on through and make for a chillier Tuesday. So just plan accordingly. For now, it's a lovely evening, though. 61 degrees, our 8 o'clock temperature in the metro into the 50s, 10, 11 o'clock. And when we wake up in the morning, some of us make it into the 30s. 39 in Ocala. I'm thinking 42 in Lake Penisofke, 44 in Leesburg, about 45 Astatula, 42 here in Paisley. And the wide shot showing the 30s, 40s, and in Brevard County, even the 50s. A really lovely start. Then for tomorrow afternoon, remember, we made it to like 70 degrees today. We are not going to do that tomorrow, though. 62 our high temperature in Orlando. 61 in Leesburg. 60 degrees in Ocala. Upper 50s. That is it. We're going to struggle to climb up out of the 50s and not do it here in Palm Coast. About 63 in Titusville and 64 degrees in Palm Bay. Why? Because a cold front sweeps on through. Tomorrow, nice and cooler conditions. Then then warmer ahead of our next storm system for our Wednesday. Storm system brings uh, some rainfall in on Thursday, and then we start to warm again on Friday ahead of our next storm system. So watch these temperatures the next couple of days. Cooler Tuesday, mild Wednesday, cooler Thursday, mild Friday. It's just all over the place. But with these storm systems, obviously come rain. So let's time this out. Here's Wednesday, 8 p.m. on Futurecast, showing some of those showers entering into the picture. Lingering through Thursday, Thursday morning.
morning and then clearing on out. Then we fast forward to the next storm system. There's 7 a.m. Saturday. Nasty line of storms out in the Gulf of Mexico approaching our area late morning, early afternoon. Have to wait and see the computer models, how they continue to initialize. But it looks like that Saturday one could bring in some strong to even severe storms. But the good news, because it is, after all, Walt Disney World Marathon Week, we're going to be able to really recover and get the rain out for the full marathon. So for now, just some breezy showers for the 5K, but the rest of the race is looking pretty okay. Central Florida's certified most accurate seven-day forecast showing the up and down temperatures with that chance of showers on Thursday and thunderstorms on Saturday. Taylor Swift adds another accolade to her long list of accomplishments. Yeah, the music king, she passed on the final day of 2023. We'll tell you all about it next. Custom weather alerts on the West 2 app. Download it today. All right, on the final day of the year, Taylor Swift added one more accolade to her long list of accomplishments in 2023. She now holds the record for most weeks for a solo artist at <laughs> number one on the Billboard 200 album chart. 1989, Taylor's version topped the ranking this week, giving Swift 68 weeks atop the album chart, surpassing Elvis Presley. Only the Beatles have more weeks at number one. That's pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. All right, the earliest version of Disney's Mickey Mouse just entered the public domain. With some caveats, though, Mickey, along with Minnie and Tigger, will be free from Disney's copyright for the first time since the 1928 release of Steamboat Willie. Starting today, artists and creators will be able to use Mickey in their work. Now, there are still major restrictions, though. The modern version of Mickey that we're used to seeing today is still off limits. Actor Jeremy Renner is heading back to work on the set of Mayor of Kingstown. Today marks one year since he broke dozens of bones in a snowplow accident. He says he is ready to film the third season of his show, and he'll be back on the job in about a week. Renner also said he had a lot to celebrate in the past year, including his friends and family, and he's grateful to have survived his accident. Hollywood closed out the year with Wonka at the top of the box office. The Willy Wonka origin story made an estimated $24 million Friday through Sunday. And if ticket sales go as planned today, it could make close to $32 million by the end of the holiday weekend. All right, the newest incarnation of America's Got Talent Fantasy League premieres tonight right here on West 2. It features the return of a one-time judge and a few tweaks to the competition. Yeah. For the first time in AGT history, the judges are going to be picking 10 acts for their own personal team, which they will have the chance to coach. One of the judges returning to the panel is Mel B. I like doing the mentoring, so you really get to kind of know them up close and personal. Just as the competition between the judges heats up, there's also a twist to the golden buzzer. Judges can use it to steal any act from any team and send them straight to the finale. America's Got Talent Fantasy League premieres tonight at 8, followed by The Irrational at 10. Then stick around for the day's top stories on Western News at 11. Western News at 6 is straight ahead. Here's what's coming up in our next half hour. Tens of thousands of people were at Camping World Stadium today for the Cheese at Citrus Bowl. Western News' Kristen Lago joins us live with highlights from that game. And the search is on for the person responsible for damaging a dune in Flagler Beach. Those stories and more next on Western News at 6.